Okay, there's the long title. Uh, my name is Scott Kuntz. Um, I discovered this method, why I didn't discover it. It was uh, forced upon me 30 years ago um, as a math major. And I did not use it for 30 years. And when I did, I was disappointed myself that I didn't have it in the back of my mind. So, you know, now I'm presenting this to you and saying, save yourself about 100 hours to 200 hours of work. Um, this can now be done. Um, you know, I'd like to say last night I did this in five minutes. I timed myself and said, how quickly can I create a, uh, a generic solution? And I can do it in five minutes. That doesn't mean you'll have a solution in five. It's just that I boiled this down to its, to its essence. Um, it's an introduction to the simplex method and I'm simple is not, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, exaggerating here. You really can integrate this easily. Um, and this is from me spending a lot of time looking for the right JavaScript. I found it. Even four years later, after I first wrote this, I haven't found a better version of JavaScript. Uh, if it's out there, I'm not aware of it. Um, so I lucked out. It, you know, took me about a day to find it and I never looked back. Um, I'm going to give you examples of what this can do. And this presentation is different, I think, than most because I'm not going to, unless we have plenty of time, I can show you the workings of how I form the question. What you're gonna be doing is forming a, that question properly, sending it to JavaScript, the black box, and you get an answer. And you're like, well, what's that answer? But that answer is pretty powerful. Um, you know, the answer is efficiency. Uh, I'm not gonna make this math intensive uh, and probably not FileMaker intensive. I'm going to assume <clears throat> that everybody can form the question the way I did. I'll show you, I'll show you how I did it. And nine out of 10 of you are gonna nod your head and say, yeah, that's probably how I do it anyway. Um, I'm gonna show you real quick FileMaker version. Uh, first of all, here's the five minute version. Um, I did this last night. I time myself and this won't make any sense to you at all right now, but this is a question being asked. And this question is asking us to make the cheapest product possible. And there are two, three, four, five, six things to go into that product. These are the variables and I want a hundred, in this case, kilograms of it. And um, there's my answer. It's going to cost me $206. And this is the simplest example. I just wanted you to see what it can become um, is something like this. And what this is, and I'll get back to the slides in a minute. This is the idea of building a recipe. This recipe can be a cake. This can be, in this case, uh, uh, elemental chemistry. I'm showing you this one because there's a lot of things that can go in. This is the shop floor. These are whatever, you know, hundred different things to go in. If I want to build this and I want 2000 kilograms and I, I apologize, I wrote this so you'll see where my cursor is. All these purple things are so you can see where I am. I want to make 2000 kilograms of stuff. I could put two, you know, I'm going to try this manually. I'm going to put 2000 kilograms of this. Am I done? And the answer is no, because I don't have the right chemistry. The chemistry should be silicon needs to be 0.95% and I've got 4%. I once tried this by hand and it took me 45 minutes to get an okay answer. Um, so by hand, you're never gonna be doing this. Um, but if I were to add, if I'm just gonna click run here, I'm gonna give it all away, boom. The cheapest you can make this, there's your, there's your recipe. Oh. So the simplex method, and you're like, okay, great, it gave you a recipe, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you why that answer is, um, you know, is more amazing than it appears. Um, the simplex method is used to maximize or minimize an objective function, subject, blah, blah, blah. Um, Basically, what's happening is you're going to want to maximize profit, minimize costs, um, 
And you need a whole bunch of linear, linear equations. In this case, blending is your most obvious thing, but your delivery routes for UPS use this. Um, uh, blending of uh, fruit juice uses this, which is why you have um, may contain, you know, one or more of the following. This is the part of the reason. Um, optical tomography uses this. Uh, trim cut loss when you're you have a big board, uh, paper or wood, and you want to cut it efficiently. It's based on this method. And this is the part that is really amazing. I can show you where a company that I worked with would say, we're already, this is what they told me, we're already um, efficient. It already costs us 250 a kilogram to make this product. And I got it down to 220. And the difference between 250 and 220 is $3 million a year. So, because this is a, you know, we're talking about big uh, production numbers. And some of those changes were so small, they were almost imperceptible. You, you won't see it, you won't be able to do it by hand or by sight. Um, but the thing is, you're going to need something like FileMaker. You cannot do this with just the algorithm. I can, I can tell you right now that you could go download, what, you know, during this presentation, you can download something called Solver, S-O-L-V-E-R. It works with Excel. Excel will do this for you. I will also tell you that you will play with it for a while and get bored. And it's just, you'll, it'll take you forever. You know, it'll take you 50 minutes to, to set up a problem. You'll run the problem. And then what, what, how are you going to run another problem? How are you going to what if? Okay, so... One of the things I want to show you is um, here's an example of solving a problem, but we don't know what we're solving. All right, this is this is actually the code I used. This page is based off that same code, but we don't know what P is 113. Is that a profit? What does that mean? Uh, but it did solve a problem. And as long as you can create this question, this JavaScript will give you the right answer. So let me go back to this. So I estimate that the mini mill I worked with, and a mini mill in this case is um, 10 million kilograms a year is their production, give or take. Uh, we probably by pressing a button uh, eight times a day, uh, instead of three hours of drudgery, is what they used to do. We save them about a million a year. Uh, we move their inventory. Um, another bonus of this is they used to make their products, they used to pull from 12 items. So they make a 300 series product and they'd say, the only things that can go in are these 12. Pick from these 12. I told them pick from your entire 300 inventory, 300 item inventory. And it started moving other, um, you know, items that have been sitting for years. Uh, so we saved a chemical engineer. This was just, I became his best friend, <laughs> um, about 12 hours a week. And this was immediate. This is right after they started using it. Um, this background was discovered by George Danzig in 47. Uh, he thought it was homework. He came late to class. He wrote it down. He worked on it over the weekend. Um, he, he turned it in bleary eyed the next week and his, uh, prof said, what are you giving me? And he said, homework. And the prof said, that's not homework and shoved it in his bag. And three weeks later, the prof pulled it out and said, oh my God, this was, um, what was sitting on the board was the most famous unsolved linear algebra problem. And some guy solved it because he thought it was homework. Um, Okay, don't try this by hand. You can do it. Um, I know, you know, I don't need to say this. I mean, who's going to go out and try it? But it's about the same algorithm 70 years they, later. They made us try um, it when we did our MBA. <laughs> what's that? When, when I did my MBA, they made us try it like a very simple one just to show yes. us how. Yeah, and it's worth, okay, yes, MBAs. In fact, um, the guy that asked me to do this for the steel company saw this while getting his MBA. So that's exactly where he saw it. 
Um, but in computer science and math, they do have you do them by hand. They'll test you by hand. This was 30 years ago. Uh, but then you have to write software. But don't even bother writing the software. Don't, I mean, even if you're computer science majors, do not write this in FileMaker. <laughs> I'm warning you. Uh, I mean, like, uh, you know, I, I will applaud you for, for a week if you could do it, but it's, it's not easy. And you're not going to be able to write it, say, um, uh, you know, in FileMaker as a script. So, so the one key thing is that keep an eye out for these. Um, I'm going to give you a quick quiz. This one's easy. We're going to create a steel blend. And we want 100 kilograms. And this is what the client wants. Okay. And this is easy. I'm going to fly through it because um, this is like saying you've got sugar, butter, salt, um, and nothing but. And these are real prices, by the way. So I'm going to show you. Uh, okay, here's an here's the idea. Here's here's an example of chromium, nickel, silicon, and iron. They're pure. And if I want a hundred kilogram, I made this easy. And I want, for example, here's my chromium at hundred percent. I need twenty percent chromium. The low and the high are the same. So this is very easy, right? I need twenty percent chromium, twelve percent. Uh, all right, nickel, 2%, and what's left, 66. I just made a product, and it's the right weight, and it's the right chemistry, okay? That's 226 a kilogram, and this, these are real numbers, by the way. If this company, which they started with uh, what's called Virgin Materials, wanted to make this simple product, it would cost 226, all right? You don't have a choice. Now, if I, I want to make the same thing, but you're allowed to use scrap metal, all right? So we're going to use something called salted butter or whatever you want. But salted butter costs less than the, the salt and the butter together. We can manually make a cheaper solution, but there's only one least cost solution. So what happens is I can add scrap and I could come in here. This is how they used to do it. They could come in and say, I want half of it to be scrap and the other half iron. This is not, um, let me get stuff out of the way. <coughs> this does not satisfy our chemistry. I could quickly come in here and say, what is this? 1, 15, 11, uh, what do we have left? 23. So I just made this with the right chemistry, the right weight, and it's cheaper. Well, how much cheaper is it? You're going to see that it's 215 instead of 226. Because of how much um, production this, this is a small mill, very small. That would save them a million dollars a year just by doing that. So you think that's great. Um, you know, they were happy with themselves. When I arrived, this is what they were doing. But I wrote this program and I said, why can't, why don't you save 17, one, you know, 1.7 million a year by clicking a button? Or why don't you try this other scrap and save 1.8? Notice this scrap is more expensive. Um, would you have tried it? They, they would have, because they could see this as more of the good stuff. This is a, you know, chromium and nickel, these are expensive. Um, this is a rarity, but what happens if I say try both scraps? Um, now it's 1.9 million. And these are very minor changes. Okay, so this is what we're talking about. Um, we, this is how it was fairly easy to say we save them at least a million a year. This is the best part of it. Um, this is my shortest slide. You're going to need FileMaker. Um, yeah, you could use something else, but most of your work, if you work on a project like this, is going to be what ifing. Uh, you go to the client and you say, um, uh, I would, um, 
you know, I first presented a product that cost them 250 a kilogram and I had it at a buck 90 and their jaws dropped. But an engineer pointed to the screen and said, I won't make that. And he told me that has too much scrap in it. I will not do this because we can't do more than 60% scrap for whatever reason. I came back and instead of 190, it was 198. And his jaw dropped and he said, oh, wait, I won't make that because we did this about five times. Um, most of my work was spent in, in FileMaker making sure that I satisfied all of their what ifs. Uh, the simplex method is in JavaScript. That was the hard part. And, um, you know, you're more than welcome. I can just give it to you and I'll show you how easy it is to connect. Um, this is... Uh, communicating with JavaScript, formatting the question is, is, can be tedious, but everyone in this room can do it. Um, it's not that hard. I'll show you a little bit of what I did. Um, here's what's not needed. This, this part is the best part. Well, after my previous slide, you don't need an API, a plugin, other software, another language. Um, you don't need any of this. So, you don't have to tell the client, you need to install this software. You don't have to tell IT, um, you know, can, can you please do this for me? You don't have to update it. Uh, Self-contained, this will run on Mac, Windows, um, standalone server. I don't know yet, I tried it, I can't get it to run on an iPhone or an iPad. Um, I think it runs on a web browser. No, it doesn't, it doesn't run on a web browser. Okay, it's a perform JavaScript and web viewer. So quite simply, it's a black box. Okay. Um, so this, the blending problem is the easiest to explain. And yes, it's still going to be a bit hard um, to show you. Um, you can find a lot of these in GitHub. This is the same thing we were looking at here, this screen that gave an example that their files are here on, on GitHub and you can search for simplex method and go to JavaScript and you may not need the word method, but, and there's a lot of versions out here. Um, I'm just showing you this because there might be a better one out there, but I have yet to find it. Um, I've looked. so. Uh, let me stop there for a minute. Are there any questions? Do no? you base your earnings on the percentage you saved them? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Did you base your earnings uh, on the percentage you saved them? This question comes up every time. And <laughs> the sad answer, no, no, this is, this is the best question and it's the, it's the worst one to answer. I tried, um, I really tried. I made a decent amount of money on this um, from this particular client. Uh, they laughed at me when I said I wanted a percentage and uh, uh, I should have pushed for it harder because uh, the toughest thing is proving what, the, what you save them. Uh, it's the moving target because um, the costs that you see here, uh, they're accounting, uh, this, this 98 cents, now these are rounded. Let me show, let me, let me get to, um, let me get to a good example here. These costs are what, uh, you know, see how accurate they are, you know, accurate, but this is the result of what it costs them to buy the scrap, ship the scrap, store the scrap. Okay, so these are really good embedded costs. This company, if they did one thing right, and this may be the only thing they did well, uh, their costs per kilogram were pretty accurate. Uh, the other thing they have is very, um, you know, these are overkill, but they're, <clears throat> they had up to four decimals of, of chemistry. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of zeros on, on these, but, you're gonna see that they were fairly accurate with, with this. Um, but what ends up happening is this. I'll show you another thing that happened here. I'm gonna make this the simplest possible. All right, 
I want to build, I want 2000 kilograms of a product. That product is here. The customer wants uh, chromium between 16 and 18. When they make it, their goal is to be between, I don't, you know, these might be made up uh, 19, you know, 16, 93 and 17, five. Why? Well, you never want to make it at 16. If you get below 16, the customer will, will reject it and so on. So when you build a product, it says, here are your boundaries. Some of these boundaries are actual boundaries and some are spot on. Okay. 16, 93, 17, five. If I add just the products they're used to putting in, this is a relatively short list. If I run this, this costs me 261 uh, to make this product uh, per kilogram. Um, that's 71% scrap and I'll just show you, and I'm gonna get to the code in a minute. They might want 50% scrap at most. Now this would, will maybe will surprise you. Uh, I don't know, I didn't run all these. If I do 50% scrap, how much more expensive are we gonna get? And it might be a lot. No, see how tiny that was? So in some cases, that difference would be incredibly high. And for whatever reason, this one's not that high. But notice, notice also, this is remelt. This is um, waste product from the previous run. It's only 4% remelt. They may insist on getting rid of 12% remelt. Instead of 263, it's 264. Not bad at all. Okay. And then I said, put everything on the shop floor in here, everything, and see what happens. What did we just save there? If you did 10 million kilograms of this one product and you were able to do this, that's $2 million a year for this, this uh, one shop because it went and grabbed scrap that normally doesn't go in this. This 434 scrap typically doesn't go in 316 AC. Is that a problem? Well, no, as long as you're not uh, hurting 434 material. So, uh, you know, without getting digging in the weeds, it is possible to run a week's worth in one shot. There is a there is a way that you can say run these 50 things and make sure all 50, the grand total savings is the most you could save uh, for those 50. Because if you run these one at a time, it's the greedy algorithm. It says, give me the best, give me the best, give me the best. And at the end of the week, you're out of nickel. <laughs> at the end of the week, you're out of something. So let's go, let's see what this code looks like. Uh, any questions? Yeah, so I was actually gonna make the same comment as Egbert, because I heard your presentation, I guess just once, but that is a question that comes up every time. Uh, and I was gonna suggest that if people do use the simplex method uh, or you know, bring it to a client that's gonna save them money, that they figure out a way to uh, price that value. And I think, or I mean, yeah, what you said, it's it's very, very difficult. And I think right now I can't imagine. So if you had implemented this for somebody uh, pre-pandemic and you were going a percentage of savings and then inflation came along and all your commodities went up, you basically would get no, yeah. You know, yeah. you're, you wouldn't, they wouldn't be saving anymore because the, 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 the input prices had gone up, um, yeah, but you, they would be saving, they would be saving. It just wouldn't be reflected. Yeah. Well, they'd actually be saving more uh, with the software. You need it more than ever when things are exactly. turgid. Exactly. Yeah. But in terms of you getting paid for how much they're saving. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, well, the, the actual reason, well, not, uh, one of the reasons that this didn't pan out for me to get a percentage was, I said that we have to, uh, we have to keep same, and this didn't work because it was hard to do. You have to assume that they're, they're uh, doing the same thing the next year. The prices will go up and down, but also the percentages of um, uh, content, their scrap may go up and down their ability to get scrap 
uh, goes up and down. So there were so many variables, there was no way to do the next month even. Um, yeah. Because you can't say, do me a favor and run your old method uh, and the new method. And could you keep track of that for me? Um, yeah. I would have done it because, you know, I, I made I made a good amount on this. Um, but it certainly wasn't, you know, they 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 uh, skipped to the bank uh, a lot, a lot faster than I did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I but, suppose if you're running it real time, you are reflecting the current um, costs and then savings. But if you're starting at the beginning and valuing your work based on. Yeah. 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 I, I could have hit them at a good point at a bad point. Um, I don't know if, if uh, for example, I ended up saving at least my estimate was four to seven percent of their input costs, and um, you know when you're talking about what twenty five million dollars a year, um, that's pretty darn significant. And I asked for a percentage, and and it was, uh, you know, it wasn't that we sat down and ha and hammered it out and said no. They they literally laughed at me, and I was like, so I you know I I made uh, you know say fifty sixty grand off of this. Um, so it was a good bit per hour, uh, but I, you know, I kind of build them more than uh, hourly as a result. But here I'll show you, um, here's the question being asked. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear this and say one, two, three, four products. A total weight that I want is a hundred kilograms. And these are the percentages. If I run this, here's the question. And you see that we had to piece this together. And what's happening is cost is 328 times the variable. And here's 328. So you're going to see that our objective is to minimize this, whatever it is, that's a variable, times this, plus this times this. And that's what this is. And you need to piece that together. And this is why I'm not going to go uh, through this. Um, this is a little bit extensive and um, it deals with running, uh, well, in this case, I'm having trouble moving things out of the way. Okay, uh, here's my C equals and I just do, I substitute a lot of you know, returns with pluses, uh, row constraints, scrap and metal constraints. Some of these get a little bit uh, scary. Uh, there is a loop of elements that goes through. I, um, I, I tried using SQL. It works, but it's just as easy to do this. And I'm, I'm using, um, let's see, a lot of uh, get fields and elements. You just have to name your fields consistently. You can run a loop. And what ends up happening is it, it runs through and determines, hey, these are my two 2012, two 2012. This is my total, total weight. Um, so you can see that these can get pretty complex. In fact, this one right here, when I run it, um, this question is pretty long. But the um, simplex method doesn't care. The answer returned is here. And I simply do an import and update for these values. Um, I clear all the values, I import an update, and it'll update whatever has a value. Um, I will show you the JavaScript. I gutted, um, you know, uh, I had shown on GitHub. This is completely rewritten and gutted. And you're gonna see that your call function to this program, uh, to this JavaScript, there's your question. Once you format the question, you send it here, function simplex run. And of course, you're just gonna have simplex run is right here. And you send the question significant digits, and these are just text. Uh, I just leave these go, uh, uh, static settings, significant digits if you want them. 
And once it sends it, here's what gets returned. FileMaker performs script. And simplex return. I happened to do a little bit of surgery on this. Um, I made sure I didn't return zero values. I don't want them. So you're going to, you know, there's a little bit of this going on. I changed the way that it did the, um, uh, you know, how did it format on the way back? Uh, you know, I did what I didn't want was an answer that looks like this. That's all. I could, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but I didn't want the zeros. So for example, I could <coughs> take all of this. I knew I had it running when, oops. Copy. All right. I could do all of this and paste it in and I can solve it. Now you notice this takes longer. It took a while because I forgot to tell it to don't, don't give me all the steps. <laughs> um, but look at the answer. It has a whole bunch of zeros in it. So I, I pulled those out. But you'll notice that 485446, 485446. Uh, we also know that the, the solution, how do we know that the solution is correct? Because none of this is simplex method. This is simple math. Okay. These formulas right here are really simple. And if anything was wrong in here, uh, you would know it right away because things turn red. So anyway, uh, I did manage to fly through that in half an hour. So uh, let me see what else I got in slides. Probably not a lot. I would like to discuss, uh, I do have some reference, uh, some history on George Danzig. Um, Let's see. Yeah, I, I don't think I need to go through any more of those. Okay, um, one more thing I'll show you is, this is interesting. If I run this and I happen to get, let me simplify this. Uh, all right. Notice that a lot of my nickels coming from here and what if that nickel, for whatever reason, 229, and I don't know if I can do this, but what if, I, what if um, that was almost all of my nickel, but it came in, in a bundle of 250 kilograms, and I don't want to separate, I don't want to measure it. What if I typed in 250 here, and you know, obviously everything needs to be redone. Well, how do I do that? Well, we, we would do something like this. And I'd run this again. That one worked. Okay, I'm gonna have to keep doing this. <laughs> um, so let's do a minimum of 300 until this breaks. You cannot make this product if you, if you were to dump in 300 kilograms of nickel. It won't happen because we have, we're making 2000. You can't dilute the nickel. So 300 kilograms of that almost pure nickel is too much nickel for, um, what do we got? 13% nickel. Uh, one way to solve that, and this gets, uh, this gets crazy. If there are any math majors, I'd be happy to show you this. This is relatively big, but if you wanna see big, watch this. What if the, the crucible or whatever I'm making this in can accept 2,200? If I run this, up, oh, wrong. <laughs> Great. Okay. If you're willing to make 2,391 kilograms, that is the cheapest you can make it, assuming you're going to dump that much uh, of a product in. And what ends up happening, though, is the question gets pretty wonky. Uh, there's a very different way of asking a question if you don't know the weight. If you didn't know the weight to begin with, all bets are off. On, well, not all bets. Half of your bets are off on the math. Um, but it, it was nice to be able to do something like that as well. So these, these equations can get pretty, pretty crazy. I can also take this scrap and say, 
this scrap, I don't want more than a thousand in there. Even though I have 9,800 available, I can run this and it'll readjust. So the what if part is important. Uh, you know, I can't stress enough that you need FileMaker. Um, yeah, it's what we do and I can what if forever. Um, yeah. You know, the client kept saying, what about, what about? I can't add more than 15% of this product. Well, go ahead and add a 15%. You know, you don't have to do the math. Um, so anyway, uh, show you one more thing. Uh, this one. This one's neat because, okay. I'm gonna run this. This one is a, a product that's really hard for them to make. It has a lot of, um, you know, boundaries. They're very, very picky about making this product. And they typically couldn't even make it um, until we ran, ran this program. They had trouble making it. But I want you to pay attention to this product right here. We added a very small amount of a very expensive item to something that ends up costing 957. What happened prior to running this program is they never considered adding boron carbide. And uh, in their case, um, the price was significant, but, but they used to try adding like 12 things and the price was 12 bucks a kilogram. And we got it down to, you know, 970, 950. And the reason we did is we started just saying, try it. Uh, you will never, be able to eyeball this and say, you know what, if I add this, it's going to help save on costs. Um, so 970, 957, um, fairly significant. And, and we didn't add a lot. You know, look at this uh, <laughs> 23 kilograms in 2,500 and the price dropped. So anyway, uh, there's the, the magic. Uh, do you want me to do you have questions? Do you want me to dig into more of how this works? One quick question is, are all their products roughly the same kind of margin when they sell them? Because what I'm wondering is, could you end up kind of in a sub-optimization situation where you make more of one product and are unable to make other higher, you don't have enough raw materials left to make some other higher margin product? Or do you kind of have to run this across the full set of products to optimize all of them together? To do it right, you need to run a full set, uh, basically per week. Um, they, they, it's, it's interesting because I thought they would run into problems if they ran the greedy algorithm and ran them one at a time. And I thought at the end of a month, for example, um, you could get yourself in trouble. Uh, are you talking about like running out of product for, you know, A, when yeah. you're going to make B next week and you, you realize, oh my God, we depleted this uh, element and, you know, what are we going to do? Uh, surprisingly, that didn't happen often. Um, what did happen more often than not is the customer was very short-sighted about buying things like nickel. Um, they would buy enough nickel for what they thought they were going to make the next month. No more. And at the end of the month, they'd run out of nickel. <laughs> and so sometimes they could make the product and have to use a more expensive nickel. You know, they could still make it. And I watched their prices. I talked to the accountant and I said, your prices have gone way down at the beginning of the month because you started using this software. At the end of the month, they spike. He says, oh yeah, that's because we don't like uh, buying a lot of nickel. I said, well, why not? And he said, well, uh, we're not in the game of, um, you know, we don't want to buy nickel just because it's cheap. And I said, I said nothing about cheap. Buy 1.2% of what you need or, or you know, 100, 120% of what you need. And then you, if you have extra left over, great. If you, if you don't, you know, you, you know, if you need it, you've got it. If you don't next month, buy less. And they wouldn't listen to me. So they had this really weird, um, you know, they had this uh, bridge cable <laughs> idea of like what things cost. To answer your question, though, it happens less often in this case than I thought. Um, they, they, 
they would tend to not run out of things um, based on the greedy algorithm, the idea of optimize each one of these uh, as you go along. I guess it's a, you're getting a pretty huge improvement anyway. So maybe there's, if there's a bit, a bit more improvement left on the table, that's just still so much better off that um, maybe it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and, and one of the things that uh, um, I did have a slide on simultaneous runs, um, only, and I didn't get to use this with them. Um, they, yeah, that was the, the, the best work, FileMaker work I've ever done was with the worst client. Um, we ended up firing each other, but they never got to this point. But I did run this and it does work. Um, there is a way that you can bring them all together um, and I had to, I had to write it down because it's not intuitive how it works, but yeah, you can do, you know, a day, a week, a month of, of runs and say, make sure you've got everything available, you know, make sure that you're not, you know, in other words, all you're telling the simplex method is run these 50, make the cheapest 50 you can run. And what I never got to do was run the 50 individually and see what would happen. Um, but, uh, but it can be done and it's worth doing, I think. If I, ran, if I ran the shop, that's what we'd be doing. And uh, furthermore, we got this stuff off the floor. Uh, there were so many items that were sitting on the floor, you know, uh, they didn't know what some of them were. You know, what's this MC, you know, nit nitrate, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes they'd say, I don't know. We didn't know we had it. And um, they were just really bad at uh, buying stuff, using it once and letting it sit. So uh, sounds another like thing that, what's that? that? That sounds like something out of uh, Gold Rat's book, The Goal, if you've mm -hmm. ever read that. No, I, I'm a, yeah, I haven't read it. I, I know what you're talking about. But then, then they force stuff. They could say, <clears throat> I need to get rid of this remelt. Um, you know, of course, you know, that's how you do it. You, you insist that, you know, you put a hundred in. So they, they even got stuff off the floor. Um, no solution, of course. Um, they would even pull stuff off. Oh, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> nope, still no. Um, there were times they were willing to spend more to get it off the floor because the, the, the cost of keeping something in inventory uh, is, got to be pretty high. Um, so they would be willing at times to raise the cost of making the product uh, just to get rid of something. So that happened once in a Scott, while. Scott, I have a yes. question. Uh, first off, amazing, really, really incredible. Um, it's probably uh, one of the most in, 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 in complex things I've ever seen in FileMaker. Um, and, and great UI, by the way, too. Like at, attention to a lot of detail. Very, very cool. Um, just wondering how much, how much, uh, recursion is there in what you're doing and how much recursion is there? And, uh, you don't have to go into too, too much detail in the simplex, uh, code. Um, uh, it's, it's all in the simplex code. Um, it's all in the sim Okay. Yeah, and then it's all here. And then, um, okay. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, there's a, uh, the, the simplex method itself, um, is, is a matter of, uh, here's the best analogy of the, the method and what it's doing. Um, if you had a soccer ball and you've got stitching and you wanna make, let's, we'll call this maximize instead of minimize. And your maximum profit is sitting, you could take a, a plane, I know this is gonna get weird, but you take a plane and you, you push it down till it hits the ball. And it's like, okay, um, my maximum profit is wherever that touches. What this does is it crawls its way up. You know, I'll tell you what. <laughs> this will be. Oh, yeah. Uh, just maybe post one of the most interesting links that you think would be helpful. Like this. <laughs> okay. This yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I think they use. Yeah, it's kind of like this guy down here. Uh, let me move stuff out of the, off the screen. 
it crawls up, it crawls around corners. Um, if you see a two dimensional uh, representation, it's even better um, mm -hmm. because all it does is walk along the vertices. Um, you can, you know, imagine two and three dimensions, but we're talking about 300 dimensions in, in my program. If, if you, um, you know, in the case of uh, checking 300 items in inventory, it's a 300 dimensional problem. But mm -hmm. all it does is one at a time say, fix this. And it's like a Rubik's cube. It broke something else. And it goes, well, fix this one. Now fix this one. And it fixes them with the other items in mind. It tries to do a best guess of what is the, you know, if you could see it, the, the place that you'd see it is um, actually, let me jump to, if I were to use one of their examples, uh, it does this math. And so it is recursive, but it, what it does is it picks a row, picks a column and says, I'm gonna fix you. And it says, I'm not done yet. And there's just simple rules. Well, gotcha. there's semi mm -hmm. And it knows when it's done. Mm -hmm. There's a way mm -hmm. of eyeballing this and I can see this one's done. And I can see my answer is 1.5. And the answer here is 1.5. So it, it, it's all, it, there's not, the only thing in FileMaker, the only thing that the, you know, if you were to implement this in FileMaker, what you need is, you know, this final code is the final result. That chunk of code, know what to pass, know what it's giving you back. And this thing right here is the toughest part. And the question is like, you know, how do I format, uh, how do I format this? How do I create this? Um, uh, business logic is important. Uh, there's a funny story about George Danzig um, had use of computers in the 50s. And he called his wife and he said, I want to test out my software. I'm on a diet. Calls his wife and says, do not buy food for dinner. I'm going to tell you what to buy because I'm going to tell my software that I need this much vitamin A, this many calories. And he runs a software and it pops up and it says, uh, Here's what you need to do. Drink three gallons of vinegar, eat four salt tablets. And, you know, it's, it was absurd, but it followed what he said you should do. And his wife calls and says, are we ready to buy, you know, my, I'm going ready to go shopping. And he goes, no, 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 don't go yet. This is, you know, so he tries it again and it tells him something else, you know, drink, you know, drink three gallons of water. Uh, eat some vitamins. And, and so he had to be more specific. Uh, it's the idea that this is so easy to piece together. I'm, you know, if anyone wants the, the code, I'll save you a hundred hours of work um, because I just feel this, it's sad that it sits like this work right here is important. And the only thing you need to do is this. And I say that, but I'm going to, I'm going to say, um, but be careful because this is one of the easiest ones to simulate. If you try to simulate, for example, um, uh, inventory, you know, process, what's that called? Uh, you know, uh, maintaining like things moving. You can do it, but you can give people a lot of wrong answers. You can give them the three gallons of vinegar answer if you don't mm. ask the question properly. Um, mm -hmm. This one was, uh, you know, kind of a no-brainer because I knew when I was right. I know when it was feasible. I just had to sit down with the engineers who would tell me, um, see this 15% here, I would be doing things like this. Uh, I'm still, uh, still problematic. I was still making mistakes because of business rules. Mm. Um, and you need someone there with you to say, that's a great answer. I won't use it. Um, you have to have somebody there with you. But once you get it, uh, it's, you know, it's amazing what these little tiny changes sometimes make no difference in cost. Sometimes they make a tremendous difference in cost. There's no way for you to know unless until you run it, you, you got to run it. So <clears throat> even running iterations of this, uh, the engineer that used to spend two to three hours a day working on this with their old brute force software, um, I told him, I said, you can just click a button. It'll run all 
you know, eight for the day in, in about five seconds. And he said, I'm not going to do that because he, he still wanted to eyeball it. He still wanted to make sure it worked. And then um, it got so easy, he gave it to um, when their workers that, you know, this is a big mill floor. When somebody was injured and they gave them a desk job, they gave it to that guy. <laughs> it got to the point where, um, you know, two to three hours a day became uh, for a, an, an engineer. We got so good that they said, just run them and, and I'll, I'll approve them. I'll sign off on them when you're done. And um, uh, so we did get to the point, you know, it took us a while to get to the point where everybody was happy with the answer, where you could almost close your eyes and click a button and, and do it. But uh <laughs> But the process is fun. I got to say, this is the this was the most fun I've had with, you know, you know, 30 some years of programming. This this was the best, the, the worst client, <laughs> the best project. Mm. And I wonder if there's any AI that's, I don't know, coming along where, um, you know, how I mean, this has got to infer based on this data, et cetera, make decisions. And I, I don't know, I'm just curious. I mean, maybe Ian and your learning, uh, you have any ideas how AI could can, could influence this or help this or? Uh, I mean, you, you know, could, what's funny is, go ahead, sorry. Uh, yeah, you essentially could train something to do it, but to be honest, the thing is, if the simplex method finds an optimal solution, um, and it's it's deterministic, whereas the AI approach wouldn't be. So, if you know the simplex is going to give you the optimal solution, yeah. So why do anything else? Yes, and that's my answer too. Um, it it took you know to run these complex ones in FileMaker uh, took a second or less, and it's and it's the optimal. There is no better answer. Uh, I'm assuming the code is good. You know the code I'm, I'm piggybacking on is, is doing its job. Uh, there is There are companies out there that are, are using uh, Monte Carlo methods with this. And um, they have their reasons for doing that, but they're calling it AI and it's not AI. It's, you know, like anything else AI, the more you know about it, the, the less you think it's AI. Um, but I've seen companies that will call their simplex method programs. I spoke to one guy last year and, uh, you know, with the possibility of getting together on this. And it was um, it really bright people and really good programming, but they didn't have anything better than this. You know, um, it, actually, when you mentioned the Monte Carlo method, that in association with this, because what this. The scenario here is sorry, there Sounds like there's a police helicopter overhead or something here. But um, this is a fairly fixed kind of scenario. If if you're trying to optimize inventory movements yeah. where you don't know what's going to happen in the future, then kind of a Monte Carlo method where you're trying a wide range of variables to see what you expect to get might, yes. might be interesting. Right. They, they need to minimize potential losses. And that's that's where... Um, there was a guy from Carnegie Mellon University who started a company and that's exactly what he did because they wanted to, to show exactly that. It was, uh, we don't know what's coming, so let's, you know, somewhat plan. And the formulas to plan everything, yes, take too long because <laughs> it's like simplex times simplex at that point. Yeah. And they use, our, they use Monte Carlo then, yes, that's exactly it. Also, it is linear equations. So basically, if it's if it if you're dealing with non-linear equations, it's not going to work. Yeah, uh, at, at there the, are other methods. boundaries. Yeah, and surprisingly, almost everything in life is linear. Um, it's amazing, and <laughs> you can take something non-linear and basically make it linear anyway. You know, um, this this solves more problems. It's amazing that this uh, algorithm from some guy coming late to class. Uh, has held up so well. Uh, they have other methods as, as something called interior point method. Instead of crawling around the soccer ball, it goes through the center. And um, it's touted as like, oh, it's faster in these cases. And 
And yes, but it, it's so it's so much more complex. And you know, they talk about potential problems. I've never had. Well, I don't want to say never. I've had weird things where I run this twice, and I get the same cost, but two different answers. Um, that's pretty neat to see. And but there are times when you run this and there's no answer, or there's um, it gets stuck. There is an answer but it gets stuck say in the soccer ball, it starts going around, uh, you know, in a circle and it, and it realizes, uh, you know, I'm toast. Um, in fact, I had to change some of my code to accommodate um, uh, the complexity of what I was running. Uh, I, call, I called the developer, I actually paid him money before he put it on GitHub, I paid him because I said, this is perfect, can I give you money? And he gave me some insight into how this, how this works, but, I had to bump up how many times it could run around in a circle. Um, you know, how many times until it said, I'm, you know, I, I'm out. <laughs> and I have yet to find, because of the nature of these problems, I have yet to have it stop and say for 150 iterations that I'm out. I don't think there's an answer. Uh, the only time it doesn't give an answer is, that I've seen is there really isn't an answer. So, uh, all right, thank you. I realize this, uh, this piggybacks, uh, or I guess it, it, it is a nice uh, segue into the next talk, which is about picking the right tool, um, like JavaScript for the right problem in that you pick JavaScript to do this. Um, so. All right, thanks guys. Contact me if you, uh, you know, if you find that you're doing this, I'd love to hear about it. If anyone has a need for this, I'll love to sit down and hammer it out with you and, and give you the code. <laughs>